Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm here to show you how you can loop cloth inside of Cinema 4D. So we all know that cloth is really cool and fun, but it's really hard to try to figure out a way that you can get that looping for certain things. So I've been big into animated GIFs, so looping is always a big concern with me is how to get my composition, my animation to be able to loop seamlessly. Uh, so I figured out a way that you can loop uh, cloth inside of Cinema 4D and it actually lends itself to not only looping cloth, uh, but a lot of other things like uh, dynamics, uh, spline dynamics, and stuff like that. <clears throat> so today I'm going to be going over how you can create this kind of abstract optical illusion type thing where I have this uh, stripe composition uh, with some stripes going across that I have the, the cloth kind of undulating. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to use particle uh, forces to be able to drive uh, cloth uh, turbulence and wind uh, and then show you how to use uh, the pose morph tag to blend between states and be able to actually blend uh, uh, be able to loop this uh, cloth simulation so let's just go and dive right in so the first thing I did to create this little abstract clothy thing I'm not quite sure what to call it uh, I created a spline, uh, and the main part of this, and I'm not going to bore you actually creating a spline, we all know how to create splines, right? Uh, but the main thing to kind of get this really cool composition is by uh, actually going and making the spline and giving it some nice depth. So you can see if I have my, if I kind of rotate around my scene, you can see we have this really nice Z depth on the spline. I'm going to undo that camera move, uh, but you can see from my uh, top view and my right view what's going on here uh, and you can kind of with all these views just kind of make sure that everything's really nice and smooth and curvy uh, so everything's going to be nice and wispy once it comes to actually applying your uh, cloth uh, tag onto this this object eventually uh, so that's so that's the main thing to keep in mind is having this nice depth allows for this really nice shadow play and ambient occlusion once you actually apply the cloth tag. So that really helps it contrast from this just plain flat background is having this really nice uh, depth with your spline that you can then apply um, geometry too. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So to create geometry and apply it to go along our spline, we're simply going to go ahead, create a spline wrap, and then we're going to need some geometry to actually wrap around the spline. I just created a plane. And so if we make the spline wrap a child of the plane, we can then choose that spline to use for our spline wrap. And right now everything's looking fairly chunky, so we need to really up the with segments here to smooth everything out. We can also bring down our height segments here. Uh, and you can see we have a little bit of pinching going on right here. Uh, but actually, we, the way I can get around this and to add a little bit more interesting uh, look to this is to vary the uh, width of, or I guess it would be the height, of this plane as it goes around. So it's not just all thick, the same thickness throughout the whole entire uh, spline wrap here. So the way I'm going to do this is just adjust the size of the spline wrap or our object as it's applied to our spline. So what I'm going to do, I just uh, command clicked on the size spline editor and what I'm going to do is just bring down the spline point here. And that's just going to scale down my spline. And I can just I can adjust this uh, Bezier handle here, and again I have this handle on the right here. I'm going to do the same thing, and just kind of adjust this so we no longer have this kind of odd thing happening where our two uh, so where our spline wrap geometry starts and ends. It's going to kind of just peter out right here and doesn't look so awkward uh, as it did before. Plus, giving the giving a nice uh, sense of, or just giving this a different varied width really adds some more interesting uh, contrast to our main object here. So again, back to the plane object, we definitely want to make sure that we have enough width segments uh, here. So I'm just going to actually crank this up to about 
200 and maybe increase the height segments to about 30. Actually, maybe that's a little bit too much. Uh, maybe just leave that at 20. Uh, we just need enough geometry. So once we apply the cloth sim, there's enough geometry to really let this uh, get some nice wrinkles and stuff like that. We, we, but we don't need to actually apply too much geometry at this point because we can then apply a cloth tag to it later that can then add uh, uh, add more subdivisions to it. So uh, I'll show you that a little bit later. So once we got this looking all well and good, kind of looks like an amber sand, I guess. Amber sands are still cool, right? I don't, I don't know. Are amber sands really cool still? Or is that kind of 2013? Uh, but this is, uh, this is looking good. So what we can do now, we need to prepare this so we can apply cloth to it. So what I'm going to do, and cloth doesn't actually drive anything that's a parametric, so we need to make this whole thing editable in this state. So that means we need this plane with this spline wrap deformation all to be just solid geometry, editable geometry. And to do that, we're going to select both our plane and our spline wrap. We're going to right click and we're going to go to current state to object. And then once I do that, that's going to create a copy. And I now have this editable plane that if I just go ahead and it's always good to keep a uh, hidden copy of your original object here just in case you screw anything up, which in my case, I tend to screw things up. So I always make sure I keep that original uh, parametric setup, uh, but then just hide it and just kind of store it away. And you can even hide that uh, spline as well. So now we have this plane. I'll just call this ribbon just so we can distinguish it from this plane object here. Uh, and now what we can actually do is apply a cloth tag to this guy. So we're going to go to uh, simulation tags, cloth. And you can see that once I apply cloth, everything just kind of falls. And that's all well and good, but that's not what we're looking for. Uh, the first thing I want to do is get rid of gravity, get rid of all this wind. Uh, so I'm just going to zero out all this stuff uh, just so we don't have any forces uh, initially affecting our cloth here. So now if I hit play, you can see that nothing's really happening. And what we can now do is apply like wind and turbulence to this object uh, independent of any of the settings here. So in all these other settings, I'm just going to leave these uh, at its default because they this the defaults actually work pretty well for what I'm trying to achieve here. Uh, so what we can start doing is in the expert tab here, we can actually include uh, particle forces. So if we go to our simulate and we go to particles, the attractor, deflector, all this particle uh, effectors can actually affect cloth as well. But the thing is you have to make sure you then whatever uh, effectors you create, you make sure you drag and drop it into this include. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a turbulence and while I'm in here, I'll also grab a wind deformer or wind object. So turbulence just adds uh, turbulent, uh, in turbulent fields in your composition. So what I'm going to do is again, if I hit play, nothing's going to happen because remember, I need to go to my expert tab and just drag and drop these forces to be included in this cloth simulation. So now if I hit play, you can see a little bit of movement, but because our strengths are so low on both our wind object, in our turbulent object here, uh, nothing's really happening. So let's just go ahead and crank this stuff up. And you can really see once I uh, increase the strength to 50 on my turbulence, we now have a lot of turbulence going on. And that looks pretty cool. Uh, so again, we can increase the uh, wind speed to 50 here as well. And you can see that uh, it's kind of pushing, pushing my a cloth object or my ribbon backwards and that's because with a wind object we have this visual of a fan and we can turn this different directions and you can see that we actually have a arrow that tells us which way the wind is going to be blowing 
So what I want to do is have it blow from left to right and then actually just give it a little tiny bit of rotation so it's going to actually be blowing to the left and a little bit towards the screen just to give it a little bit more uh, interesting movement. So not only is our cloth going to be blowing to the right, but it's also going to be pushing forward ever so slightly. So now I can hit play and you can see that now our uh, due to our wind and our turbulence, our ribbon is now floating over to the left there. And that's all well and good. Uh, but what I want to do is actually uh, pin down portions of my ribbon here so that they stay in place. And then kind of act like a flag uh, or a sail or something. Uh, so it's pinned down and we have the rest of our object kind of flowing and billowing in the wind. So to do that, uh, just going to go and do a loop selection. So I'm going to hit U, ah, my dang whack em. Uh, so U, and then if you see L, loop selection, I'm going to hit that. And so I'm going to make a loop selection, and I'm going to select this one edge here. Boop, right there. And then what I'm going to do to make sure that those are fixed points, I'm going to go to the dresser, go to fix points and hit set. And once you hit set, you'll see that we now have some purple uh, points going on here. And if I hit play, you'll see that now we have some stationary uh, points and then we have our cloth kind of billowing and flowing, but being still fixed on the one side there. So that's looking pretty cool so far. I think the one thing I really want to do is add a little bit more turbulence. So I'm going to up the strength to about 200 so now we're getting a lot more turbulence going on and then I'm gonna adjust the scale and what this is gonna do is adjust the scale of the noise that's driving our turbulence field so if I bring that up a little bit more you can see that our noise is much bigger and we have a lot more undulation going on and that looks really really nice so let's just uh, keep it at that so you can see that once we have our simulation going, everything's looking really good, but at the start, nothing's really happening at all. Uh, and to actually fix that, there's a really handy option where say I want my cloth simulation to not just start where everything's flat, but I want it to start where it's already billowing a little bit. So say right about frame 100, this is the state that I want it to start at. This is where I want my cloth simulation to start. So what we can do to actually accomplish that is go into our cloth tag, go into our dresser, and we're going to set the initial state. So this is kind of like with the set initial state with dynamics, if you're familiar with that. But what I'm going to do is if I hit set and I go to frame zero, you can see that where I set that initial state, that's actually where our cloth simulation is going to start from instead of the just flat spline wrapped ribbon. So now we already have effects of this wind affecting our cloth, and then it's going to start from there. So this looks a lot better if you're going to actually want to loop some cloth. So you already have some of the cloth simulation started. So now that we have this going on, uh, what we can do is go ahead and start applying some textures. So uh, in my uh, final render, I had this really cool stripey kind of... Uh, visual uh, distortion thing going on with the stripes due to the cloth. So it's uh, uh, some, some cool stuff happening there. So what I'm going to do is just create some stripes. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is create uh, stripes for my background. So I'm going to create a background and just scale up this, whoop, scale up this plane here. And then what I'm going to do is just place this right behind where my uh, ribbon's gonna be, or my cloth. And just scale this up a bit more. And the reason for this is so, uh, once if we have this close to our object and we add some, say, ambient occlusion, that shading is gonna then affect that background. So keep that in mind, that's why I'm positioning my background uh, plane object so close to the actual ribbon. So I'll just rename that plane BKG, and then we can add our stripes. 
So what I want to do is just use a luminance. I just want some flat shading for my background. I'm going to go to texture and I'm going to create some do 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 where is it surfaces we're going to go to tiles and then under tiles we can change the pattern from squares to lines and i can choose to create just black and white stripes so black here and then uh, we'll change the tile color three to white and then we don't want any bevel we just want solid black and white here. Uh, and then we can apply this to our background. You can see that our background is really, really big right now, or our stripes are really, really big right now. Uh, so we can actually go and just bring down this global scale, say to about 15, and there we have a decent amount of stripes going on. That might be actually a little bit too thick. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, so let's go ahead and then apply this same stripe material to our cloth or our ribbon here. So you're going to see when I render this, there's some really weird, uh, well not weird, this is predict uh, predictable, is we have both of our uh, material tags applied as uh, projection as UVW. So that's kind of why we have this discrepancy with how our uh, stripes are applied to both of our objects. But in my final composition here, we have the stripes kind of applied similarly. And then once that cloth kind of undulates, that's what moves it out of, uh, out of uh, sync with the actual background, the vertical or the horizontal stripes back here. So to do that, uh, I'm actually going to change my material projection from UVW mapping to camera mapping. And now what this is going to do is I'm gonna actually I'm going to use my camera here as a projector to project that stripe material onto both the background and the cloth here. So the first thing I need to do is actually define a camera and I'm just going to define the camera we're currently looking through. And then you can see that if I hit render now, you don't see anything. And that's because we now have the same stripe pattern kind of being projected onto both of our background and our ribbon. So it's almost like if you're watching a movie and you stand in front of a movie projector, you're going to have that movie's projection uh, actually cast onto your body but then your body is going to kind of cast a shadow after it. So that we, that's the part that we need to do right now is we need to uh, make it so that our foreground is not so uh, just luminant that we actually have some diffuse shading onto it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to rename this background stripes and I'm going to duplicate this material and I'm just going to name this ribbon stripes and I can spell stripes, see? Uh, so then what I'm gonna do is apply that to the ribbon and I'm going to activate the color, the diffusion, and some reflectance. And right away if I hit render, you can see that not only is my uh, are my stripes now more contrasting to the background, you can actually make out the ribbons, uh, but we have this nice shading on it. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead. I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, reflection here. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Get some Fresnel. Uh, let's see. Let's bring the specular. I don't want too much specular going on here. Maybe something like that. Uh, for the luminance, uh, I'm going to bring down the, actually let's go multiply. So we're multiplying this onto everything here. I'm going to go ahead and in my diffusion, just to get some nice shading, I'm going to go and add some ambient occlusion. I'm going to make sure that I have this effect luminance. So that will actually be seen through my luminance channel. 
So now you can see we have some slight ambient occlusion going on here, kind of uh, defining the edges here. And again, this is why it was important to have that nice wide depth in my spline that I initially did the spline wrap with. Uh, what I want to do now is actually just bring down the brightness of my color channel just because I only want a tiny, tiny bit of diffuse. I don't want it to be too overpowering. I want there just to be enough contrast that you can tell enough that there's something in the foreground, uh, that, which is the cloth that is then going to get deformed and then uh, deform those uh, the stripes on our texture. But you can see we have no deformation of the stripes right now, and that's due to the fact that we're still in this camera projection here. And while our cloth is undulating, that projection is staying the same because our projector, again, is just acting like a movie projector. It's just shooting onto both of our objects here. So to be able to actually have this so, uh, the stripes kind of deform with uh, the undulation of the cloth. What we need to do is go to our ribbon, go right click, and we're going to do a stick texture tag. And what this is going to do is stick and record the texture as it is now. And then once there's some deformation happening, it's then going to move along with it. So you can see that now our stripes are undulating with the flow of the cloth geometry. So now we have even more contrast between the background and the foreground because of the fact that we have that stick texture tag breaking the texture up between the background and the ribbon. So now we actually can see what's going on here. We actually see the, the form of our ribbon there. So that's looking really cool. Uh, the one thing I want to do is Go to the diffusion and let's up the uh, the ambient occlusion just so we can see it a little bit more. Let's maybe even turn down the luminance here a little bit maybe. Let's go add. Uh, let's bring this luminance down a little bit because I just want to pull in a little bit more shading. Uh, so I have some soft boxes here uh, that are going to be casting some shadows, uh, but this is a little bit too bright. So let's just bring that all the way down. Maybe we need to bring in a little bit more of the color channel just to get more uh, diffusion happening, a little bit more shading happening, and maybe even adjust the specular here. Let's see how this looks. So what I'm just trying to do right now is just create enough shading so you can get a better sense of the form of the ribbon. So let's see what's going on up here. This is where we really have a lot of overlapping here. So we're getting some really nice shading down here. That's all well and good. Uh, one thing I'm noticing right now is uh, some really slight, uh, not pixelation, but uh, polygon distortion going on here. And to fix that, uh, one thing is going on is uh, we have a little bit too much reflection. Let's just adjust this. All right, so uh, the one thing that's going on is we don't have enough geometry here. Uh, we're getting a little bit jaggy edges here, especially right down here. So to fix that, uh, really easy, just go to your cloth, uh, simulate cloth, get a cloth surface, and then just put the ribbon underneath the cloth surface. And due to the fact that we have, by default, uh, subdivisions happening, it's just going to subdivide our geometry so there's more defined geometry. And we're going to get a nice, uh, much smoother uh, cloth simulation, more smooth, uh, smoother cloth geometry. Uh, so now we're going to have some really nice uh, wrinkles happening, especially right down here. That's looking really nice. Whoops, I stopped my, have my Wacom <laughs> pen, and every now and then it just likes to stop the uh, 
calculation because it's, think it's thinking that I'm hitting the screen and I'm not. All right. So again, the cloth surface really smoothed everything out really nice and good. So we're really getting some nice shading, especially at the bottom there, you can see. Uh, and we can always fix that and add more uh, diffus uh, diffusion going in there by pumping up that color channel a little bit more, which I think I'm going to do right now. Uh, yeah, let's keep that to add. You bring down the uh, luminance a little bit. All right. I'm getting in a tweak mode. I'm falling into tweak mode. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. Done with tweak mode. Uh, so let's actually move. <laughs> let's move on because I get stuck in tweak mode a lot. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're at the point now where we have our really nice cloth simulation uh, driven by our turbulence and our wind. We have our cloth surface really making this uh, geometry really nice and smooth. Uh, we get these really nice wrinkles uh, going down around here at the top and the bottom and even over here. Uh, we have, uh, what do we have? We have, we have our stripes uh, undulating and deforming that stripe texture on our ribbon due to the fact that we did the stick texture tag. Uh, so everything's looking really, really nice. The only thing we need to do is make it so we can loop our cloth simulation. And how we're going to go about doing that is first we are going to uh, cache this simulation. So under the cache, you just hit uh, calculate cache and we're caching our cloth data. So now we can just scrub through our timeline and uh, our uh, our composition is 150 frames long, so our cloth sim is going 150 frames. And you can see the importance of being able to start with the cloth already deformed uh, due to the whole uh, initial state uh, option there. Uh, and now what we can do is set this up so we can loop. So how we're going to do that is we're going to first duplicate the ribbon. So let's rename this uh, ribbon 1, and we'll rename this ribbon 2. And by duplicating that, we actually just kind of destroyed that cache. So we're going to calculate the cache again on that second ribbon. And because of the fact we didn't change anything, uh, they're actually going to sync up perfectly. Uh, so I'm actually going to hide this new ribbon. And uh, we're going to go to my handy dandy, uh, one of my most fun things to use. I use it almost every project is my happy pose morph tag. And what the pose morph is going to do is, depending on which things you select down here, it's going to morph between different states of, or different things of different objects, different properties of different objects. And what I need to do to loop the uh, cloth here is record the point deformation, so the point level animation of these objects. So I'm going to go ahead and on the basic, I'm going to mix points. So the points of my two pieces of geometry, my two ribbons here. So what I'm going to do is by default, we have a base pose and then a pose we can mix into. So let's just, I'm going to hide my original ribbon and I'm going to go into my other, my second ribbon here. So basically what I need to do, and it's just like looping anything. So if you're looping something in uh, After Effects, you need to make it so the end of your animation looks like the beginning of your animation. So how can we do that? Well, something that's very handy is once you cache a cloth simulation, we have this offset here, where we can actually use this offset to determine where we want our cloth simulation to start. So right now, with no offset, our cloth simulation starts at frame zero. But if I change this to 50, you'll see that my cloth deformation starts at frame 50. So you see what I'm getting at here. Between zero and 50, or frame 49, we have the very first frame of our animation uh, in our viewport. So if I actually change this to 150, which is the end frame of our animation, what's happening is our cloth simulation didn't start. So we now have the same cloth 
sim uh, frame uh, or point position of our cloth here, same the same on frame one and frame two. So now all we have to do is blend between this initial ribbon to blend to this ribbon two, which is then holding the first frame position of all the points in our cloth simulation. So let me actually just demonstrate that. So I'm going to turn off my second ribbon, go to my first ribbon, and I'm going to hit play. So here are our cache is just played out. We have no offset. And basically what we need to do now is due to the pose morph tag, I have my base pose uh, and we have a target. And what I need to do is tell it that this is my pose I want to morph from and I want to morph into that ribbon two pose, which is that frame zero of my cloth sim. So I hope, I hope that's making sense. So what I need to do is actually def uh, define a target and my f base pose is going to be that ribbon one. So all that point level animation is going to be in that base pose. And then the point level animation or that frame zero of that, uh, of my ribbon sim is actually going to be my pose zero. So what I'm going to do is make sure I go to pose zero, or I'm just going to rename this to, uh, initial state. So this is that initial state that we set. Uh, with that cloth tag, drag and drop the ribbon and that's going to be the target. So now you'll see that due to the fact that I uh, did that, we can now uh, adjust the strength and you can see that there's my frame one. And if I go to frame 150, this is without no uh, strength on that initial state. This is actually the last frame of the cloth sim in our initial cloth sim. So basically all I need to do is at the end of my animation, just make that strength go to 100 and then it will just loop back and that cloth deformation will be the same due to our morph here. All right, so if I didn't have that, you can see that this is what my end of my initial simulation looks like and that doesn't match up at all. That would just be uh, a jump. So what I need to do now is I need to go from edit mode to animate mode. So I'm ready and raring to go, ready to animate. Uh, and what we need to do is set a keyframe to uh, adjust the strength of that initial state. So at the end of it, my animation, I'm going to set a keyframe. And then as it gets to the end of the animation, I'm going to bring up the strength and basically go back to that initial state of the initial deformation that happens on frame zero of my cached cloth sim. So now if I hit play, you can see that we have a little bit of jump, but you see at frame zero and frame 150, our cloth looks exactly the same. And that's all due to the pose morph, doing the point level animation and morphing to that initial state with that offset. So our, our, uh, our ribbon uh, looks the same on this ribbon here. And then we just morph to it. We morph from the in initial cloth sim and we morph to the frame zero that's held in this ribbon. So to fix the fact that we have this, uh, if I let this play, we have this little bit of jump or not even a jump, but this like ease in. That's all due to the fact that we have uh, with our pose morph strength here, we have an ease in and ease out. So basically all we need to do is kind of get rid of that ease in by just adjusting the Bezier handle here and making it a little bit more sharp. We still want that. Actually, you know what? We don't even actually need uh, ease in and ease out. We're just going to change these two keyframes to uh, linear keyframes. So just by hitting that linear keyframe button. And now if we hit play, you'll see that we still have a little bit of a pause. And that's because we're actually duplicating the last and the first frame. Because remember, uh, we're morphing to the frame zero of our cloth sim due to the ribbon two. So we're actually duplicating frame zero at frame 150 and then at frame zero. So we have two frame zeros 
basically. So what we can do to fix this is we can either offset our uh, ribbon one cloth sim by negative one, or, so what this is gonna do is it's already gonna start the frame one of our cloth sim one frame earlier, so we won't that get that one frame overlap, or, uh, actually that's the one way to do it. <laughs> that's the way to do it. Uh, so now if I hit play, you'll see that we no longer have that overlap. And if it's a little bit too sudden, actually that looks pretty good, but if you need to uh, keep in mind how you space out your uh, initial state strength. So if I have this a little bit too fast, you can see that we have a little bit of odd uh, movement happening there at the very end. It almost like rushes back to that initial position. So uh, when you're looping cloth, kind of play around with how many frames it takes for you to morph between those two states. So let, that's uh, 50 frames, and that's a little bit too much, I feel like. Uh, that's a little, it, our cloth sim kind of slows down. Uh, if I set this to maybe 30 frames, let's see how that looks. And that looks a little bit more natural. Can maybe even speed it up just slightly. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Uh, so you, again, you can adjust this so maybe it's uh, an offset of two. See if that's a little bit more seamless. Or just maybe one, I don't know. You can kind of mess around with this and see what looks more seamless uh, to you. Uh, but I think that looks pretty dang good. Uh, let's see. Maybe adjust this. So everything just kind of depends on how your cloth looks, the speed of how your cloth is undulating. That's all going to determine how you space out this uh, this morph. Uh, and I think I'm actually going to, I want to try this negative two. I think that's a little bit more seamless right there with negative two frames. Let's see with negative three. So yeah, I mean, that that looks pretty pretty good to me. So that's basically how you can loop cloth. So what we did uh, was set initial states. So our animation started with already some cloth deformation due to our turbulence and our wind. We then duplicated our cached cloth simulation. So we clothed that, ca uh, that sim, that cloth sim. We created a second ribbon that basically just duplicated the cloth sim, cached that as well. By offsetting it by 150 frames, our cloth sim doesn't actually move from the initial state at all because we offset it 150 frames. So basically this state set uh, holds the initial state of our animation, our cloth animation. But then to morph to that, uh, between the end of our cl initial cloth sim to the beginning of the cloth sim, we simply used a pose morph tag with some uh, uh, point mixing to then blend between the two different states uh, with a simple, with just a couple keyframes, and that's how we did it. So hopefully that made sense to all of you. We have some nice looping cloth here. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to hit me in the comments section. Uh, Pose Morph is very, very cool, and I hope to do more uh, cool tutorials with the pose morph. I, I use it so much uh, and it's a really cool way to blend between uh, different states. So this isn't only limited to uh, looping, uh, using pose morphs for looping cloth. Think about all the other kind of simulations you can use or uh, you can use to morph between uh, pose morphs. So you can use uh, spline dynamics. You can use uh, uh, soft body dynamics, rigid body dynamics. So you can use the pose morph tag to blend between a lot of different things because look at, at all the things you can actually record uh, with the pose morph tag. So things you can mix, you can mix position, scale, rotation, uh, parameters, hierarchy, so entire object hierarchies. So uh, think about morphing between different positions of objects and, and stuff like that with uh, rigid body dynamics. So it's not only just point level animation you can mix between uh, with the pose morph tag. So pose morph tag, very, very uh, powerful tool. Uh, even though it's under, it's under the character tags, 
but I I <laughs> I barely use it for character work. Uh, I use it a lot for just my uh, my normal motion graphics workflow. So uh, be sure to play around with that and have fun with this. Uh, I'd be really anxious to see what you guys come up with. I'd really like to see if you guys come up with some looping cloth simulations. I'm going to make a GIF of this. Uh, so I, I encourage you guys to make some gifts. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Uh, and again, as always, thank you guys so much for watching this. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.